Okay, in the previous video, we talked about reading concavity off of the graph itself, and so now we're moving on to problems where you're going to be doing this algebraically using calculus. So we're given x cubed times x minus 4. We want to find the point of inflection, if there are any, and then the interval or intervals of concavity. Okay, now before I jump into starting to take derivative, what I'm going to notice here is I can multiply and distribute that first because that way I can avoid using the power of the product rule there. So first thing I'll do before I take any derivatives will be just to multiply and distribute that. x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. That's going to be the same as the original one. Okay, so we didn't do any calculus yet. Now, since we've done it this way, we don't need to use a product rule, we can just use the power rule. We're going to take the first derivative by using power rule. So 4 comes down, x to track 1. This 3 times 4, 12x squared. That's your first derivative. Now the first derivative I would use to find increasing, decreasing, relative, max, and min. We don't have to do that in this problem, so we're going to move directly on to the second derivative. So I want to take the derivative of the first derivative. So now we're getting down to the second derivative here. So we're going to use power rule again. 3 comes down, multiplies by the 4, 12x squared, and then I get minus 24x. So, uh, one of the ways that we can find possibilities of inflection points is if the second derivative is undefined anywhere. Well, because we have a polynomial there, that we know that's always going to be defined for every value of x. So we're going to move on to the second way of finding a possible inflection point, and that's where you're going to take the second derivative and set it equal to 0. Okay, I have 0 equals 12x squared minus 24x. We're going to solve this by factoring. We're going to take out a common factor. You can take out a 12 and you can also take out an x from here. When we factor that out, we're going to get x minus 2. We're going to take both of these individually, set them equal to 0. When you do, you get 0 and 2. So do I know these are automatically going to be inflection points? Well, no, we actually don't know at this point if those are both going to be inflection points or not. The reason why we don't know this is because you have to set up the number line and verify that you have a change in concavity, plus, minus, or minus, plus. Without that, we don't know if these are going to be inflection points or not. So it's very important to first go ahead and do the number line before we jump to conclusions and, and say that they're inflection points. Let's put, put a number line. We're going to do 0 into a number line and we're going to do test points. So it's a very similar process of what you did with the first derivative, but now we're going to use the second derivative when we put our test points in. We can pick negative 1 between 0 and 2. Well, I'll pick 1 as test points and this is going to be 3. So like I talked about before with the first derivative, you can use any point you want to as long as they fall inside each of the intervals. I'm just picking easy numbers to put in, numbers that are close to my endpoints. And remember, when you're, when you're putting these in, you have to use the second derivative when you make this chart because we're looking for concavity. Okay, negative 1, put it into the second derivative. Negative 1 squared is positive, and I have negative and a negative there, that's positive also, which means that that's, I get a plus. I'm going to put a 1 in here. 12 minus 24, that's negative. Then I put 3 in here. 3 squared is 9 times 12 and then minus 24 times 3. That result is going to end up in a positive number. Again, we don't care what the number actually is. We're only concerned about whether we get positive or negative. Now that we have this complete, we can actually verify now that 0 and 2 actually are going to be inflection points. How we know that is because notice we have a change in sign here plus to minus, minus to plus. That verifies that 0 and 2 are in fact inflection points. Okay, so inflection points are going to be in this case. Now when you write your answers, because it says inflection points, you need to write your answer as a coordinate. Okay, so I have 0. Now when you want to find out the actual y value, we want to use the original function because what we're finding here, these inflection points are actual points on the graph itself that the line goes through. So that's why we got to go back and use the original one. If 
I put zero in here, zero times anything is zero. So zero, zero I get for the first one. Then I'm gonna put two into the original one. Okay, that's two cubed is eight, and that's gonna be eight times two minus four, eight times negative two, that's negative 16. I could have also used this one if I wanted to also, it doesn't matter, both of them are the same because we multiplied it. These are gonna be your inflection points. Again, they're verified because we have a change in sign. Now the other thing we have to look for is concave up and concave down. Concave up is where you see plus signs. That's gonna be from negative infinity to zero, but also from two to infinity. Okay, so that's places where you see a plus sign. Then we're gonna look for concave down, and that's gonna occur wherever you have a negative. The negative is gonna occur between zero and two. So again, concave up is always where you see plus signs. Concave down is where you have a minus. So we have our two inflection points and we have intervals of concavity. So now let's take a look at another example. All right, let's look at one more. We have another one where we're given a function. We wanna find all the points of inflection and intervals of concavity. Again, the first thing I always wanna find here is the second derivative. Okay, so first, this one, I don't need to rearrange at all. I'm just gonna take the derivative directly by using the power rule. Four comes down, multiplies by two, I have eight x to the third minus eight, and then derivative of three is zero. That's the first derivative, let's find the second derivative. Okay, I wanna take the derivative of eight x cubed minus eight. Three comes down, 24, track one, 24 x squared, and then this is zero. This is gonna be defined, so since it's defined, we're not gonna find any inflection points that way. Let's take this and set it equal to zero. Okay, so remember, whenever you wanna to attempt to find an inflection point, it's always a second derivative equal to zero. In this case, if you solve for this, you're gonna get zero. Now. One thing I want to point out here is, again, the zero is defined on the original one, but we really don't know for sure if it's an inflection point unless you see the concavity changing. So I'm not going to label this inflection point just yet because I need to look at the chart and see whether it's an inflection point or not. In this case, I have a number line chart here I'm going to draw with a zero, and I'm going to do test points. So I'm going to do a negative one, and I'm going to do a one. Put these into the second derivative. I'm gonna put negative one in here, 24 times negative one squared, that's gonna give you a positive result. I'm gonna put a one into here, and I get a positive also. Okay, well, is zero gonna be an inflection point then? The answer is no, because the concavity does not change here. Okay, you have a in this situation, you have a place where nothing, you have a plus and a plus, so actually in this case, there are no inflection points on this particular problem. So when you find the answer, again, you, you can't assume it's an inflection point unless you actually check the number line to see if the concavity changes or not. Now, let's look at uh, concavity here, okay? We have concave down, is gonna be none also, because there's no negatives that are there. So the graph is never gonna be uh, concave down. What does this graph actually look like then? Well, this is actually gonna be a graph that kinda of looks like this. It's kind of a parabola, but it has a flattened bottom there whenever you have the fourth power. So in this case, it's always gonna be concave up. You're gonna have concave up. It's gonna be from negative infinity to positive infinity. So basically the graph is always gonna be uh, concave up. And so there's no intervals of concave down at all and it's always going to be concave up.